This is likely the most dangerous manufacturing method you can legally have in a garage. And I'm using it to turn 3D prints into pure metal. High temperatures have never been a big deal to most 3D printer enthusiasts, as modern hot ends live between 400 and 570 Fahrenheit. But today, I'm playing with 1300 degree Fahrenheit molten aluminum. For my metric friends, that's around 700 centigrade. All in an attempt to create solid metal parts in my own garage. Here's the challenge. I need some real metal parts, preferably on a budget. And if I can pull this off, it proves I can build more exotic parts for future projects. So we have three projects for the day. Project A is to cast a whole speaker basket as one solid piece. The way real manufacturers do it. That's the ideal dream. Project B is a dipstick adapter for my Silverado. Basically a little bracket that relocates the dipstick retention screw to a more convenient spot. And Project C, because I refuse to give you a sad ending, I've got these coin molds. I already know they will cast fairly clean. Worst case, we're walking away today with the molten aluminum turned into a fancy coin. To make any of this work, I had to design the positive parts that make the negative mold in sand, and not playground sand. I'll explain that in a minute. I 3D printed those positives, packed them in sand, found and melted aluminum, and then tried to pour it in without setting myself on fire. I'm going to walk you through every step, and then at the end, we'll crack the mold open together and see if I made an actual usable part or just modern art. Step 1. We need molten aluminum. Caveman Brain says solid metal plus fire equals liquid metal. The same way ice plus heat equals water, in reality it's a little less dumb than that. Aluminum doesn't melt until it's stupid hot, so I need a controlled fire that gets around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is my furnace. It runs on propane, and it's lined with insulation that can live in that kind of heat without melting or combusting. And it turns scrap aluminum into a pourable liquid in minutes. Now, the aluminum sits in this cup. It's called a crucible, and crucibles are usually ceramic or graphite, and their only job is to hold angry, hot, glowing metal without disintegrating. This is where all of our metal parts begin life. Step two, we need something to pour that angry, hot metal into, and a 3D printed mold is not going to survive that. Instead, we're using this stuff, Petrobond. It's an oil bonded casting sand, and it kind of feels like a gritty Play-Doh. It can handle molten aluminum without freaking out. The idea is simple. You press your 3D printed positive into the sand, you pack it tight, and then you pull the print back out. That leaves a perfect cavity for that spicy liquid metal to fill. Sounds easy, right? Spoiler alert, it's not. The speaker parts actually need a two part mold. So it gets a little more complicated than push and pour, but I will walk you through that once you're familiar with how all of this stuff works. Step three, and honestly the whole project kind of hinges on this, is the printed positive. This is the part I 3D printed that makes the cavity in the sand. This isn't the final speaker part, this is just the pattern. Its only job is to make a clean void in the sand and survive being pulled out in one piece. Just like in my vacuum forming video, I have to be able to pull this out of the mold without tearing the mold apart. So I ran draft analysis on all of the surfaces before I printed it. I will point you to that video at the end if you want to see how all of that works. I also tried to think about how molten aluminum is going to flow into these pockets and how it cools. Metal shrinks when it solidifies, so I've scaled the part up about 1.8%. That is a number you will see recommended a lot when doing aluminum sand casting to compensate for shrinkage. Now, I'll be honest, I probably should have made some sections a tiny bit thicker so that the metal has an easier path because I've never really tested how thin I can cast at home. All right, let's actually make this thing. I've pulled the prints out of the printer and now it's time to 
basically entomb them in casting sand and pack it tight. I'm doing two part molds. I did not spring for a nice cast iron split mold, so I built this extremely home improvement aisle two piece flask. Feel free to judge, I forgive you. I start with the bottom half, side A. I drop the speaker basket and the plug in, face down, and I pack Petrobond around it as hard as I can. Then I pull the basket and the plug back out. I take the plug off, dust some release powder so it does not stick, and I put the basket back in the sand. And then I clamp the top half of the mold on and pack more sand for side B. You've probably noticed this extra cylinder in here. That's the sprue, a channel where the molten aluminum is going to flow. I'll also cut a little couple vents so air has somewhere to escape. If the air can't get out, you either get voids, or it does something very dramatic I don't want happening anywhere near my face or my body. The purpose of the sprue here is to give some extra height. It becomes a feeder and it adds a little head pressure during the pour, and it gives us a reservoir of metal to keep feeding the part as it cools and shrinks. Now we pull the printed parts and oh, that's not supposed to happen. The mold should not have crumbled like that, and I've never had it fall apart like that at this point. So I don't think this batch of Petrobond is up to this large two-part pole. Now I could chase this all day, but the smarter move is to simplify. I will just redesign the basket as a three-piece pattern for an easier mold making, and I will just weld it after casting. For now, let's print a smaller mold and use our three-piece design and see if it's a mold problem or a sand problem. Well, that tells the story. It's not a speaker basket kind of day. At this point, I'm parking Project A, and we'll come back to it with proper bonded sand or a different process. Maybe lost PLA or sodium silicate. I'm just angry at this point. So let's pivot to Project B and actually finish apart. While the furnace is heating and the aluminum melts, a quick thanks to PCBWay for supporting this build. I could have cheated and had them 3D print me all of these parts in some exotic material, and they would have had it to me within a week as well. I've used their services to complete a number of electronic projects and speaker projects alike, whether it was 3D prints, PCBs, or some fancy CNC stuff. They've never let me down, and their parts are phenomenally accurate. And the shipping has always been reliable. If you want to create awesome projects like you see on the channel, check them out at the link in the description. And buy through that link to support the channel. It, it really does help the channel, guys. But back to it. Now that we're up to temp, let's check the melt. All that gray junk floating on top, that's dross. It's just impurities and oxides that bubble up as the aluminum liquefies. I'll skim all that off so it doesn't end up in the casting. And I'm going to add a little borax. Borax acts like a flux. It helps clean the surface. It can trap some of the leftover oxides and it can help the metal flow a little smoother. I've also heard it can even tighten up some of the properties, but I'm kind of skeptical on that. This isn't a rocket engine part though, so I'm totally fine experimenting with borax and what it can do to the aluminum. But let's try making that second mold. So Project B, this one's fun because I can run it as either a two-part mold or an open face mold if the two-part fails. I'm going to try the two-part first as this geometry is much simpler and the mold volume is much smaller, so the sand has a better chance of surviving the pole. Editor Justin here, quick continuity note, you'll see a change of scenery. I kept fighting the two-part mold and printed a smaller mold to test. And as you'll see, printed plastics and molten aluminum are not friends. Please don't try that at home. I am in full PPE with two fire extinguishers and fire blankets on standby. It also got late and the propane furnace is loud, so I switched to my electric furnace to stay inside the city noise rules. Now back to the video. Same basic process. Part in the mold, pack Petrobond tight with a hammer, strike it off, dust, release, and pack side B. I'll cut a sprue for metal in, small vents for air out, and a short riser feeder on top to feed for shrinkage. If this holds together, we pour. Let's see if that smaller mold actually saves the day.
Looks like I was right. The smaller mold was the key. The two parts split cleanly with no edge crumble. This is exactly how a two part mold is supposed to behave. Now you see all that extra geometry on our final part? That's the sprue, the gates, the riser. This is normal. Those channels let metal flow in and feed the casting as it shrinks. It also lets air out. If you look at most cast parts, you'll spot the little witness marks where those were cut off. It's the same idea as gate marks on injection molded plastic. You'll see the little circles where they were cut off. Now let's move on to project C with an open face coin mold for a quick, satisfying pour. Project C is basically because I knew I would have the furnace running. It's kind of a pain to set up. I've got these little Pisces printing coins that I printed for detail testing. The big coin should come out sharp and I'm not worried about it at all. But this tiny 30 millimeter coin, I have no idea if the lettering and texture are going to survive casting or if it's just going to be a shiny blob. The neat thing about these is they're super easy to mold and cast. I only need one half of the mold and I press it into pack Petrobond or I can pack Petrobond around it and flip the mold. And then I pull it back out and that gives me the cavity. Then I just pour straight into that imprint. I've got a fresh mold packed. The crucible is topped off. So let's do one last pour and see how much detail we can actually keep. And since we're basically done with the furnace after this pour, I'm also going to pour whatever aluminum is left into these graphite bar molds. That way I've got clean ingots ready for the next project instead of a mystery pile of we don't know what it is. All right, are you ready for the final reveal of the video? Take a look at the back of the coin. See how it's kind of sucked in? That little dip is shrinkage. That's the aluminum losing volume as it cools. And it's the exact reason we use that extra feeder height on the sprue. Now, the little coin did fail. It's basically a blob. But let's dig out that bigger coin. And this is our good one. This large one came out very clean. You can read everything. But that little 30 millimeter one did not survive. You can't see anything. The detail is gone. The lettering's gone. And like I said, it's just a blob. And that's kind of expected at this scale. Real currency this size, it's, it's pressed and stamped under tons of pressure and it's not cast in sand. And this is why, for detail retention. Now, with our perfect coins in hand, we can say we've made the journey from molten plastic to part to molten aluminum to part. I'll clean these up in a quick montage and then we will have our final reveal of all the parts. So let's look at what we actually did today. We started with plastic. I 3D printed patterns, packed them in Petrobond, and used those to make sand molds. I'm guessing this all makes a lot more sense now than it did at the start of the video. We melted scrap aluminum in a propane furnace. We skimmed it, fluxed it, and poured it around 13 or 1400 degrees, and turned that into real metal parts in a garage. Did you guys learn anything in this video? If you did, let me know down in the comments. Now, project A was the one piece speaker basket. Cast as a single solid part, super high risk, factory style, and it did not work the way that I wanted. Project B was the dipstick relocator for my Silverado. It was way simpler geometry and we proved we can cast something useful if we design it to work with what our setup can actually handle. And project C was the detail test. Casting these Pisces printing coins straight from a print, just to see how much tiny geometry we can actually keep while guaranteeing a win. 
The crazy part is that all of this happened without a foundry, without a machine shop doing the hard part for me. This is just printers, sand, propane, and my stubbornness. So here's where we're at. Project A told me that the two-part mold process has limits right now. It's either the sand blend I'm using or my current technique, probably a mixture of both. For complex shapes like the speaker basket, I'm going to have to move to a better bonded sand or even a different casting method. Project B proved that even within those limits, I can still pour functional parts if I design it for an easier mold, smaller overall with thicker walls, and a touch of post-processing. And that's honestly a huge win for me. Project C showed we can pull real detail in aluminum straight out of the sand and we walked away with a clean coin and an actual usable part for my truck. And honestly, I am so happy with that. So go ahead and hit subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss round two, where we come back with smarter molds and hopefully slightly less sketchy molten metal shenanigans.